Thank you very much. You don't know how honored I feel up here. A little nervous, but mostly honored and excited. Uh, if you would just indulge me a few, a few minutes, I'll try to keep it short, and I will. Um, how excited I am and honored I am by uh, receiving this honor. And I want to uh, explain briefly, it's a long trip, but I want to explain how I went from a professor at the University of, uh, actually start before that as a graduate student, and a professor at the University of Colorado, my first job after the PhD, all the way to meeting uh, Manuel Ayel, I'll call him Musso, if that's all right, uh, and that's how I knew him, and, and end up explaining, you know, explaining along the way why you graduates, whether you majored in economics or not, are in many ways far better economists than I was when I got tenure in the late 70s at the University of Colorado. And I will explain that as I go along. Actually, the explanation starts early in my talk. As a graduate student in economics, I learned what a lot of graduate students in economics learned back in the late 60s when I was in school. And that was, if you're a good economist and you want to get tenure, you had to be able to take simple ideas and render them completely incomprehensible. And I got good at that. Uh, and uh, I went to the University of Colorado and I started publishing incomprehensible articles, a lot of calculus. Nobody would read them anyway, so why wouldn't I make them incomprehensible? The, even the people who were judging me didn't know what I was talking about. And as a result, I got tenure in the late 70s. And boy, was I proud of myself. Um, it served me well. And back then, I, uh, and as an undergraduate, I was kind of a Keynesian. That's what everyone learned. I'd kind of shed that in graduate school. And I, uh, but I was very pro-free market. And you know why? Because I could prove that free markets were the best economy for producing wealth than any other economy we've ever known. Boy, was I naive. Now, before you take that the wrong way, I wasn't naive for believing that free markets were the answer to producing wealth. They are. But I was naive by thinking that I could prove that to people, convince that, to convince large numbers of people that by using calculus. Well, it turns out calculus has got the most effective means of communication for most people. Actually, and I've forgotten most of it myself by now anyway, so I don't even think I could understand the stuff I wrote uh, 30 years ago. But what I did is I started a long journey. That It's a long journey, but I'll keep it short which actually led to Musso and University Dad Francisco Mary Queen. What happened was, and to keep a, a long path, a long story short, is I met an individual named Jim Buchanan, and I was invited to move from Colorado to Virginia to work with Jim Buchanan. He won a Nobel Prize uh, in 1986, Nobel Prize in Economics, and as a result of working with him, I started meeting really interesting people. And Musso was one of them, one of the most interesting in many respects. And, and what I found they were doing, they were doing just the opposite of what I had doing and proud of myself for doing. They recognized that economics is difficult. It's more than just you know, proving that, okay, with this mathematics, economics, markets produce a lot of wealth, they were saying, well, there's a lot that goes behind that production of wealth. You have to have institutions. Buchanan got his uh, Nobel Prize for doing, you know, inter inter introducing politics in a very interesting way. 
Uh, every economy is a political economy. Every economy requires institutions. Every economy requires law and distinguishing between law and legislation. And I started learning about things like that. And I started meeting these very, very interesting people. And Musso was certainly one of them. We went to the same organizations. He was president of almost all of them at the time or on their boards. He was somebody, if you believed in freedom, if you believed in, and I didn't even know much about freedom at the, when I first started, I learned, uh, you knew Musso. And he was an economist. He was a scholar, he was an entrepreneur, and he was so much more. Couldn't go on all the things Musso was, but he was, I think, primarily at heart an educator. And I'm sure that's why we have UFM. I'm sure entrepreneurial skill had a lot to do with that, that the existence of FM, UFM, but it would never been, it never been here without Musso and his dedication, and Musso was passionate about not just liberty, but liberty and responsibility, and how markets were important in generating that. Markets just weren't incentives to go out and maximize your well-being. They were incentives to maximize your own well-being by taking others into consideration, by following certain rules of the game, and those rules of the game and the institutional arrangements and all kinds of other things were very important, but they were complicated. And what Musso and Buchanan and a lot of other people back in that time were doing was recognizing that economists could learn a lot by going back over 100 years, 200, 100 years ago and reading the giants. Adam Smith comes readily to mind. We could also learn a lot from the new work that was being done. But we needed the giants too, the old, the deceased, the, uh, the uh, classical economists. And what they were doing, interesting, vitally interested in doing, was doing the opposite of what I had done. They were interested in taking complicated ideas and rendering them understandable. And that's when I was an undergraduate, even a graduate student, I didn't read Adam Smith. We didn't read it. I did sneak a little bit and read some Buchanan and Public Choice, and that's how I got a chance to meet him and, and work with him. But they were taking complicated ideas and rendering them understandable. And that's the big advantage that the students here had over me. Actually, I had a big advantage I got to learn the old way and then transition, take the road to the new way and a much more informative way and a much more interesting way for me. And, but many of you, maybe all of you, are better economists today than I was when I got tenure. So, and that's not actually saying a whole lot, but, uh, but you deserve a lot of credit and Musso deserves a lot of credit. And, uh, I'm just very, very proud to be here. Uh, it's just a real honor, and I think uh, I just wish Musso was here to be with us. Maybe he is. Maybe he is. Thank you very much.